What's up everybody, my name is Dad Radish and I'm your vegetable father. So I'm super excited to do this replay review. Um, it's I've been sitting on it for weeks and um, it's taken a long time because uh, this is a constructed system gateway game. It uh, lasted for 25 turns um, and it's a, it was just a really uh, fun game with a lot of stuff to talk about. So uh, this is, uh, again, it's constructed gateway. So these are the two decks that we're playing here are only system gateway cards. I'm playing a custom uh, Zaya deck with mostly imported Anarch cards. Um, and my buddy Tater Vader is playing a Jinteki shell game deck. So the sort of archetype here is that it wants to install traps and uh, not protect a lot of stuff with ice and sort of just just make the runner pay um, in clicks or credits or, or cards for guessing wrong. Um, it's a it's a pretty pretty common opening archetype. It really showcases a lot of stuff that's new about Netrunner. Um, I think people or that's interesting about Netrunner um, compared to other kinds of card games. Um, and I'm really excited because it shows uh, sort of just how much gameplay is available in the gateway card pool. Um, I didn't really think that the shell game kind of um, uh, archetype was was playable, but it totally is. And and we had sort of this amazing sort of epic game on it. Um, so the thing that you should know before we kind of jump into the replay is that before this game, we played uh, like a nine turn game with these same decks. And I, I won that game. It was sort of just went conventionally. Um, my my buddy was sort of he's been learning corp and he was sort of playing it playing it straight he was uh he had a scoring remote he had a secondary remote there was a little bit of guessing games but um it didn't sort of take off and i was able to apply pressure in the right ways so i told him so the way to play this deck is to just install stuff um you protect your centrals with ice and you just but make a lot of remote servers um you can use ice in there sometimes to like create a little bit more texture to the server mix but really you're playing this differently than other than other decks it's you're taxing the runner in a different way um so uh uh, much to my chagrin, he follows my advice here. <laughs> we played this 25 turn grinder um, that was, um, again, nonetheless very fun. Um, uh, my friend Tater Vader has gone on to become an inveterate Jinteki player. <laughs> and uh, since this game, we've played uh, more of this particular matchup. We played uh, games, of, uh, uh, he's played some Jinteki and startup. And anyway, uh, it's a really good picture of how to play this corp, I think. Um, and it's in gateway. So uh, it, you don't even need to go to a bigger card pool to have a go at this archetype. So I really wanted to um, give anyone who's who's newer or um, if you just happen to be jumping into this game, you know, long after sort of the launch of gateway, like, um, you know, pick up gateway, there's good stuff in it. All right, let's jump into this replay now. So uh, in the first turn, he's immediately following my advice. Um, the, the, the corp goes first. Um, he draws into uh, a uh, spin doctor. Um, he goes ahead and uh, uh, protects R&D and then gets two uh, servers out on the table. Um, so that that's great. It's good play for this. Um, he's he's sort of instantly, uh, again, following my advice, doing, doing what I said there. So the first thing I do is he leaves uh, HQ unprotected. So I play Jailbreak. Um, he's, he's also played some cards, so his um, his his hand is is thinner. I get to see more of it. Um, so I go ahead and play Jailbreak. I see the Hansei review here, and then um, I I nab the off world office. So that's that's great. I sort of could be happier with my <laughs> with my the first click of the game here. Um, in the second click, looking at sort of my hand here, I get to, I, I have a successful run there. And so I'm like, okay, mutual favor is a good play here. Um, uh, I, I also gain credits from accessing two cards with a uh, jailbreak, a combination of jailbreak and uh, ZI's ability. Uh, I'll just say it out loud just so we, we get to see it here. Um, whenever run on HQ or R&D ends, so the sort of two main central servers, um, you may gain a credit for each time you access a card during that run and use this ability only once per turn. So uh, I, again, I saw two cards out of HQ using uh, Jailbreak, so that gave me two credits. Um, not rich by any means, but I have some stuff to work with, and so that's like a great uh, moment to use Mutual Favor. So I'm really worried in the early game in these gateway games of hitting uh, white space, um, which will uh, kind of take three credits and then and then usually end the run unless you have a lot of, a lot of uh, credits floating around. Um, so that can really suck out a lot of momentum. So without any sort of foreknowledge, I, I get out my code gatebreaker with a mutual favor buzzsaw. 
just install it. I just want to want to have that there as an insurance kind of get some value out of having made a successful run. Um, click one. And then my next sort of thing to do is to get the verbal plasticity out. So this says the first time each turn you take the basic action to draw one card instead draw two cards. So um, this makes it uh, uh, more efficient. And I know that we're play I'm playing against a shell game deck. This has Urtica Cypher in it, which um, will uh, do net damage, meaning it'll take cards out of my hand randomly. So I know I'm going to need to draw because I'm, I'm going to sort of hit, hit these traps um, in the game. So. All right, so Rural Plasticity comes out, um, and then I draw again. I uh, uh, get back up to five cards. I broke. <laughs> so as much as I was sort of excited about um, having some credits, um, you know, uh, kind of in the middle of that, uh, it, it goes away real fast. All right, so um, the corpse next turn is just all Regolith. So uh, Res is the Regolith Mining License for two. Um, and then just takes uh, a total of nine credits off of it. Each each click, each of the three clicks worth three credits, so nine total. Um, this is a pretty safe play, like I can say from this vantage point now, because there are no agendas in hand. R and D has some protection. Um, you know, money is the thing that'll uh, sort of keep the the corpse agenda uh, plans <laughs> rolling forward. So, um, all right. So the runner turn. Um, the first thing I do is to uh, I, I get a credit, and so I'm thinking if this is white space, I need a credit to break it. So uh, I decide to try and uh, do a run a jailbreak on R and D, see more cards. Um, it was a Karuna resin. This this surprised me. Um, it, it probably shouldn't, but I was um, you know sort of expecting to run run through the white space, and then but instead I I'm going to take at least two net damage here. Um, so I take I take the two net damage, the first subroutine. It's a sentry ice, I should say, first. So I can't interact with it. I take the first two net damage, um, uh, take two, and then it has the clause here. Karun has this very gentle clause, which says after when you're doing the first sub, you can choose to jack out after it. So I decided to do that. Um, and I lost the creative commission. And this is how I was going to crawl out of being broke um, at, at, at the end of these, this, uh, this particular turn. So what can I do? I uh, uh, use uh, my first draw. It get, gives me two cards, um, and then I uh, take a credit. So, all right. Turn three, corpse starts. Uh, click one, make more servers. Um, so again, following my advice here. Um, Ices up HQ, and then plays a Hunter of you. That, that gives money and then activates um, Jinteki's uh, Restoring Humanity's Drip ability, which is when the discard phase ends, if there's a face down card in archives, gain one credit. And so the, at the end of this uh, this turn, um, uh, the corp here is going to gain an additional credit. So, all right. So as I go into my turn three, I feel like, okay, it's time to, to run things. Um, uh, there's a, a motivation to run things early against these, this kind of deck um, because if it is, if the trap is an Urtica Cipher, more advancement tokens on it means that um, it's it's a more painful thing to check. So um, I gain more from from checking it early um, and trading away two cards instead of trading away four cards. Um, because the deck is trying to put out a lot of traps, it becomes harder to to make a correct guess and say this is a, an agenda. Um, uh, this is a trap. Um, and as a matter of fact, if you leave a clearinghouse out for too long, then the clearinghouse can can sort of be your demise. Um, so you you sort of can't, at least my theory on this is, is as the runner playing against a deck like this, you have to run almost everything. Um, you can't let anything sit longer. The earlier you run, the better it is for you. So, so don't wait too long. Um, so it's time to run things. Uh, first, I play the Wildcat Strike. Um, if... Um, he gives me cards here, then it, I can tank. I can tank more of a trap if if that happens to be the case here. Um, if I get the credits, then I needed the credits, so that's fine with me. And so it goes for the cards. Um, so I run server one first. Um, I think I do, I don't do them quite in order here, but um, I run server one first. We don't know what it is. Um, it's a spin doctor um, with a two trash cost, and uh, I can't trash it. I don't have the credits to do it. Um, and in any case, um, he goes ahead and uses the Spin Doctor ability um, at this moment. Um, so then I run Regolith. Um, there are server three. It turns out it's a Regolith, and I can't trash this either. Um, it costs three, so but at least I know. 
Um, I have successful, these are successful runs, so uh, mutual favor um, is more efficient. Um, I can uh, get a get an icebreaker and install it. So um, I do get my icebreaker. I, I pull out the Carmen, which is the, my sentry breaker. I know that I'm going to need it to get past Karuna. Um, so, uh, but I don't uh, have enough credits to install it at five. So um, this is just, it's not an extra efficient play, but um, I, I get it into my hand, believing that I'm going to need it um, eventually or need it sooner than later. Okay. All right, turn four. The Corp has a new server here. Um, and I don't know this, but it's Clearing House. So just to talk about the mechanics of this, uh, it can be advanced. And when the turn begins, uh, the Corp player can trash the asset to do one meat damage for each advancement counter on it. Um, meat damage and net damage being roughly the same. It's random cards pulled out of hand. And if um, the runner has no cards in their hand and they take a damage, then um, that's a flat line. A loss for the runner and a win for the corp. Um, so uh, yeah, there's some interesting mechanics with uh, uh, Clearing House and Urtica both being in the in the same uh, deck. Um, you can't leave Clearing House alone, and you but you want to leave Urtica alone. But when it's face down, they look the same. So um, uh, we'll see uh, this in play uh, throughout the game. So makes a new server, and it's also a Clearing House. <laughs> so um, these are two things I'm going to have to sort of check on. Um, and the three trash costs here is important because let's say it has advancement counters on it um, and I run it, I find out what it is, but I don't have enough to trash it. Then those just sit there and they can deal damage, um, you know, at the beginning of the next corp turn. So in any case, all right. So and then the third click for the corp here is to advance um, uh, server four. And so on my side, I'm sighing about this because um, uh, my, my buddy's taking my advice and it's going well. I'm asking here, is that an Urtica? Um, I need to check server four and server five. Um, and then like, what do I need to do in my turn in case server four is a trap? Should I, should I draw cards? Do I have enough cards? Are there any cards in here that I really need to play and not lose to, to net damage um, uh, in case it is an Urtica? So let's see how I uh, kind of deal with it. I guess the first thing I do is gain a credit. Um, oh, I gain a credit in order to play the overclock. Um, and what I'm doing here is I'm running uh, the known regolith mining license in server three. I, I want to trash this, um, and I'm afraid of sort of letting the corp have um, all of this money. Um, so uh, that's that's sort of the play there. Um, and then I overdraw. Um, with a verbal plasticity in case uh, server four is a trap. Um, and I, that's sort of my plan is to run server four. I think it could be an Arctica Cypher. Um, I run it and then I find out that it's a clearing house, but I'm too poor to trash it. So um, uh, this is where I'm sort of learning this lesson about needing to, to have, have money around to kind of um, face this particular uh, deck archetype. Um, all right, so it's the corpse next turn. Um, here, uh, so uh, before the turn starts, uh, he res the clearinghouse and uses it. Um, in, in a weird way, he sort of might as well do this because I know what it is. Um, and uh, uh, there's no there's no longer a mystery. It's kind of like a high profile thing for me to trash. Um, investing more in it might, might not be the right play. Um, there's another line where you could protect it with ice. You could advance it more and protect it with ice. So, so then you're sort of really upping the stakes and saying to the runner, like, um, if you really want this, you have to come and get it. So, um, the way the court plays out the rest of this is um, with uh, more servers. So, um, a server six comes down, and it's a long longevity serum. Um, I still don't know what server five is. Um, and then server five gets the advancement and server six get the, the, gets the advancement. So this is a pretty, uh, um, you might call this a fork. Um, like uh, it gives the runner a choice of what to run here and, and the, the signature of these cards is totally the same. I don't really have um, great clues about, about what's happening here. Um, this is more sighing <laughs> from me and more cackling um, from my friend, so. All right, how do I deal with this in my turn five? So the first thing I do is draw cards. Um, and I have my barrier breaker here. I don't want to lose it to net damage, so I go ahead and bring it down. 
And then I go ahead and run server six. Um, this is just uh, a random play, not sure. Uh, but I managed to get the steel, and so that feels really good. I'm I'm excited about that. Um, this is the kind of uh, this is a good jump uh, in this game, and um, because I'm not behind, it gives me a little bit of freedom to be a little more judicious. So um, I appreciate that. So I gain a credit. I still remain very poor in this game, too poor in this game. So um, just trying to um, uh, get close to being able to play something, sure gamble or um, a creative commission. All right. Corpse turn six uh, makes a, a new server um, and then it's a uh, an offer loft is protected by Ansel. Um, let's see. Oh, and they advance the off world office. So this is um, basically threatening to score this next turn. Um, okay, so at this point, I don't have any money um, and I'm trying to hit basically every sort that comes down. So I, I sort of decide and realize here that I need the penny shaver out. So this whole turn is credit, credit, and then install penny shaver. Um, so this gives me an additional MU. Whenever I make a successful run, I can put a credit on the hardware. Then I can click to take all of that accumulated credits and then um, uh, plus one or rather I add another credit to it and then take the accumulated credits. So um, this is pretty good. It will reward me for all the running that I'm doing. Um, and I sort of run archives here to turn off that drip economy that has been, you know, pretty long lasting and then I can benefit from it a little bit by getting a credit on, on Shaver. So here with server seven, I kind of say to myself there, I'm ahead. If it's an agenda, they can have the agenda. I need to set up some other stuff to make sure that when the end game rolls around, um, I'm in a better position to sort of make moves there. So that's kind of the sacrifice I'm, I'm consciously making. Um, and that sort of comes to pass. So they advance, 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 and then they go ahead and score the off-world office. It gives them more money. Um, I think they, they remain pretty rich this entire game and all that happens. So, okay. I know I want to check server five at this juncture. So the first thing I do is draw. I take money off of Penny Shaver. Um, I install the Mayfly because it's another card that I don't want to to lose. Um, I feel like this is going this could play a role later on in, in again in, in an endgame scenario if there's just one piece of ice protecting something. Um, I, I kind of want to have it. All right, so in my last click, I go ahead and check server five. Um, and uh, I'm mad because it's clearing house, and once again, I don't have enough to trash it. So I'm kind of slow to, to learn my lesson, this particular lesson in this game. Um, I think it might also be, uh, I should say also that I think it might also be a function of the deck, which um, probably didn't have enough economy in it. Um, and one of the things I did, I think, after playing this game is I added, I was at two copies of Penny Shaver. I went to the full three um, and, and transferred out some cards for Econ cards, just knowing that um, I need that I, I needed it um, and, and didn't have it. So, um, OK, let's see. Turn eight. So uh, the Corp installs the it basically does this other play pattern, I think, which is um, installs the Karuna, then advances the clearing house. So this is a real challenge, right? This says like, if you don't get in here, I'm going to advance this a lot and and um, make the game more dangerous for you. This basically says I can't end my turn. If I end my turn with two cards, then the Corp does clearing house net the next turn for three and, and I lose the game. So this creates a different kind of set of pressure pressures on the game, um, even though uh, in theory, I know what this is. So. My turn eight. I know I need three to trash the clearing house. So what this looks like is um, draw. It's a credit. I take the penny shaver money and that brings me up to four. And then I um, overclock run on on the server. So I know I might need to mayfly. So hopefully the five credits is enough. Um, he reses. It's a Karuna. Uh, I can break it uh, for four using the mayfly. I get in and then I can trash the clearing house. So that ends up being my whole turn. All right, turn nine from the Corp. Uh, it is make a whole new server, <laughs> server eight um, in this game, and then trash the initial, um, uh, let's see, this spin doctor from server one. Um, the next play is to, to trash it, um, to return uh, clearing house and Hansei review uh, back into R&D out of archives. Um, and then resing the uh, new spin doctor for uh, some card draw. 
uh, draws them into more economy. So again, I don't think they suffer from money at all in this game. Uh, make a new server um, and then play Hansei Review. Um, so empty hand and um, just one more thing at least to check on the on the uh, table for me. All right, so my turn nine. Uh, I install uh, the leech. It feels like um, it'll come in. It'll come in handy um, in the game, and so I just uh, get a leech counter. Turn off the uh, the drip economy for uh, for the corp, and then uh, oh, I, what I'm also doing here is um, I'm trying to produce a successful run so that Carmen is cheaper to get down. Um, exactly three. So I, I do feel like I need to get the Sentry Breaker out. I don't want to lose it to net damage. Um, there's only two copies of each Icebreaker in this deck and in Gateway there's no um, uh, recursion. There's no way to pull stuff out from, from the heap. So um, I, I have to have that stuff. Um, I can't lose it. All right, turn 10 for the Corp. Uh, the first click is Dante Review. Um, and then uh, pull the remaining credits off of the regolith and server too. So that's the whole turn. Again, <laughs> the corpse is richer than God. So um, I sort of stopped thinking about the corpse money at this point because it just feels like the corp has complete freedom to do um, what they want to do on their turns. So here, uh, this is just uh, credit, credit, credit. Um, and in retrospect, these could have all been runs on archives. It could have been building up money on Penny Shaver and and Leech um, at the same time. So that's that's a I think a pretty significant misplay on my part. More Leech tokens would have could have made a difference. I think later in this game. Um, all right, Corpse turn eleven. We are not even halfway to the end of this game. <laughs> um, on the mandatory draw, they get Spin Spin Doctor. Um, they return. Uh, Sorry, for the Spin Doctor and Server 8, they return uh, Clearing House and Regolith from Archives. So they're um, getting some of uh, some of their installables back into R&D. Um, make a new Server 10. They use the Spin Doctor uh, uh, draw uh, here um, to pull two new cards, the Artica Cypher and the Karuna. And then they, uh, let's see. Install the Artica and advance it. So, let's see. So I start withdrawing, um, and then I know that one way to not be so poor in the game is to get red team out. So that's um, another sort of order of business for me. So I, I take a credit so I can get to five, and then um, I play red team. Uh, that's my third click, and then on my fourth click I run server nine. I haven't done it yet. Um, and uh, server 11, I sort of allow to, to, to be whatever it is. I'm resigned to, for that to be whatever it is. Um, it's the regolith mining license. Again, I'm broke, can't do anything about it. But at least I know what it is. All right, so the corp draws a clearinghouse. They make a server 12 with a clearinghouse in it, and then they advance both of these cards. Um, this is like another big sigh for me <laughs> because server 11, which I sort of left alone, um, this could just be a slowly advancing agenda. Um, if it's clearing house, it's become more dangerous. It's, if it's Urtica, it's also become more dangerous. I didn't run it last time. Um, you know, I, I feel like I have to run it this time. Or there's a lot of pressure to run it, at least I should say. All right, so I take the money off of Penny Shaver here. Um, I want to run R and D. Uh, I think I do this because I know sort of how much I need I I need in order to get past R and D, and I want to use Red Team to do it. Um, so I know I have to run Server Eleven at some point uh, before it gets out of hand. Um, again, with the two advancement counters here, um, it becomes uh, sort of uh, more more scary, more intimidating. All right, so I use that leech counter, um, which is pretty important the leech counter brings this down to two and it means that Carmen uh, can break uh, can break the subroutines for two makes it a lot cheaper um, to get through the server um, okay so I wasn't able to steal an agenda in that run um, so I, I draw more cards with verbal plasticity as HP and so I run server 11 
uh, access the Urtica and uh, face palm. Um, so I go ahead, I, I take, uh, let's see, uh, one, two, three, four, four and a damage from that. Um, and Docklands is the card that I, I really wanted to keep out of that. Um, it's the one that I cared the most about and uh, it was sort of a bummer to lose. Um, but um, it's kind of important when you're playing in this matchup that you know that your cards are HP. It's a resource you can trade away and, and you sort of, you beyond a certain point, you can't be too precious about the cards you're keeping because um, uh, if you are, it'll, it, it might, you might play kind of fearfully, which is sort of what the corp wants you to do in this situation. So, um, so there's still this clearing house on the board and the corp, what the corp does is installs uh, Karuna over the clearing house um, and then advances it, advances it some more. Um, now it's a three. Um, this is a pretty dangerous. This is a, a five. This will be five net damage if it's an Urtica. Um, if it's a clearing house, it's you know becoming becoming more tricky. So um, I'm low on cards, which means I'm low on HP. So I drop, uh, click one. I run R and D. I'm getting some value from red team. Um, it turns sort of if I use the leech token and spend two credits, it becomes um, four credits and an access on R&D. I could, you know, if I access a five, three agenda, I win the game at this point. So getting these accesses feels like um, an important thing to be doing um, at this stage. So I go ahead and run uh, server 12. Um, I sort of had to, I had to take a penny shaver money before that to, to sort of have money to power icebreakers. So um, I can uh, break uh, Carmen here, or sorry, break uh, Karuna with Carmen. I decide not to use the leash token because it would make it make the R&D access more expensive uh, next turn. And then what I'm sort of telling myself here is, um, let's see. So I see the clearing house and um, I decide not to trash it here. Um, I'm thinking that it won't kill me if it's if it gets used next turn. So it's going to be uh, three damage and I can survive that. Um, and if it gets advanced, um, I know I think I know what I need to do to get him, which is break Karuna. So I, I it's sort of like a known quantity. So I'm you know right now I'm more worried about being super low on credits and it, I still have some options if the corp decides to invest in this some more. So they do make it complicated. They draw, uh, let's see. They draw Palisade um, and then put that over the remote <laughs> and then they advance Clearinghouse more so to five. So I know what this is, uh, but the danger value just keeps increasing. Um, so uh, this is me. Yeah, I start my turn 14 uh, going ugh. <laughs> and I... Unfortunately, I'm like, if with a full hand, I still survive that. So um, I draw. Uh, I'm getting kind of anxious to end the game. So I jailbreak run on R&D instead of uh, running on server 12. Um, I look at two cards. It's a it's a whiff. Um, but at least with uh, Ziaya, I use the ability and gain, um, gain more credits. Um, I do a red team on archive. So what that does is it gives um, three credits off the off the card. Um, it adds uh, tokens to uh, penny shaver and leech. So it's just sort of like trying to get value. Um, and then with with sort of that little push, I can play sure gamble, um, go up to nine, uh, have what feels like a, a finally like decent amount of money. So uh, the corp decides to to sort of call it here. Um, uh, knowing that I have money, knowing that sort of things are, are kind of coming together, maybe believing that the Palisade is not going to be um, not going to be as strong by the next turn, uh, just goes ahead and, and uses the Clearinghouse, so I lose a lot of stuff here. I lose Creative Commission, I lose Leech, I lose uh, DZMZ, um, Sure Gamble, which I really wanted in Creative Commission, so a lot of my um, a, a ton of uh, a ton of money leaves my hand here. Um, install another clearing house in server 12 again they're still still got a pretty good credit pool here at 16 and then advance advance so i'm telling myself here i have to run it um even if it's an urtica i have i have to run this um if it's a clearing house then i i'm kind of get put in the same position as before so i draw with verbal plasticity 
uh, I draw again, I draw again, and then uh, this is enough cards to tank um, a two advanced Urtica is four net damage, so... Um, so yeah, I go ahead and run it. Um, I can break Palisade, but it is super expensive. Uh, if you don't have a successful run, the way this the breaker works here is it's one strength, costs a credit to boost it uh, by one strength, and then it costs two to break barrier subroutines, unless you've made a successful run. If you made a successful run in the turn, um, it's only more conventional sort of one to break barrier subroutines. But um, uh, this is a pretty big strength differential, so you have to pay a lot to, to get past that, and then it costs two. So this this cost me five credits to get through here. Um, and then I am uh, break Karuna, and then I say, is it an Urtica? And then I see it's a clearing house, and I am so mad because I have two credit, two credits, and not three credits. <laughs> so can't trash it. All right, corpse turn sixteen is advancing the clearing house again, like making it very threatening, um, forcing me to have to have the money to get in. So yeah, to keep the game going, I just gotta, I gotta run it. So. Um, So I want to have a successful run first, so Marjana is too expensive. So I run, I red team run R&D. In the back of my mind, I know that a 5-3 would end the game. Um, so I whiff, I don't I don't get an agenda here. Uh, for my second click, I take money off of Penny Shaver, brings me up to nine. Uh, I have a sure gamble, I play the sure gamble, and then I run. Um, so I managed to make it through here, and then I trash the clearinghouse for three, finally. Um, okay. So in turn 17, the corpse cells regolith on the table and they just res it and take all the creds from it. So they, they have a huge bank um, once again. So I kind of notice around here that I only have three cards left in my stack. Um, so, uh, and cards are HP. So anyway, I go ahead and draw. Um, that might as well. Um, I go ahead and hit. Go to R&D. Um, the card that I uh, find there is Regolith. Um, I feel like maybe it's time to... Uh, I, I have the Docklands Pass. I feel like, okay, a single axis off R&D aren't doing it for me. I, I need to sort of uh, uh, get out this multi-access and it might be another way to uh, win the game. Corp starts. And then they put um, a tithe over the Karuna. Um, they put a regolith under this Karuna. Uh, this is sort of an interesting thing to see. We haven't sort of returned to some of these other servers, but there it is. Um, and then an Anoetic Void in server 12. I um, mean, this Anoetic Void ends up playing like an interesting role um, as this game is sort of starting to close out here. In turn 18 for the runner, um, I have to, ch I feel like I have to check server 5 and I can sort of, I can afford it. Um, by using this leech counter. I know that this is a two cost break if I use the leech counter, so I go ahead and check it. Um, I learn as regolith. Um, I don't I don't have the money to trash it, so um, what I start doing here is um, just running archives repeatedly to build up uh, penny shaver and leech tokens. Um, Yeah, that's the that's the whole of it. Just sort of building up those tokens. I, I know I don't have many cards left, so there are fewer outs now for the, in this game um, that come from the stack that come from having cards that do things in the game. Um, it might just come down to raw resources, and so that's why I, I kind of went in this direction. Um, all right, turn nineteen for the corp um, draws to start, and then um, installs more ice. Installs diviner over. Um, server 12 this is going to be you know the the scoring server um i can tell um and then take some some money off of regolith so that's the last click for the corp there um i want to see what's in hq um with Auckland's pass i know that it'll um yield two credits um, but i don't know what the ice is so um since I don't know what the ice is, I go ahead and um, run archives a bit more to get more penny shaver, more leech um, to 
token or virus tokens on leech. Um, I take the money off of Penny Shaver for my third click, and then I run uh, last click on HQ. White space gets rezzed. I have a really good breaker for it. Um, it only costs one, um, and then I make it through. Um, I see the Palisade. All right, there's only two cards, right? So I see the Palisade and the Hansa Review. Not much. I gain two credits. Um, that is the, the turn 19. So this feels a little bit like a scoring window here for to maybe get it into server 12. Um, having an agenda would probably be good. Um, because I'm farming archives, they uh, he goes ahead and puts a palisade over archives and then draw and draw. I know that the corp ended their turn on a draw um, and, th and they didn't get to do anything with those those draws there. So I'm suspicious and, you know, can I, might I get lucky here? Is that are there any of those draws um, agenda? So I run HQ. Um, this nets uh, this particular run nets nets a credit with uh, the Aya's ability. So um, I acts as a clearinghouse in HQ, and um, <clears throat> unlike uh, sort of other times I where I, I'm accessing things and I'm kind of worried about my money, I trash the clearinghouse here and I trash the an anoetic void that I see. I want HQ to be clearer, so future HQ runs um, I see I get to see more stuff. There's less floating around in hand. Um, I take the Penny Shaver money, I run R&D here, um, I can make it all the way through, um, but I whiff, uh, no, no agenda on that HQ run, so, and then by the last click, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a little resigned to this, so I take my last card draw, <laughs> it's like, fine, whatever, empty stack, um, there are no more mysteries there. So, turn 21 for the corp. They draw into white space. They draw again. Finally, they have an agenda. Um, I think they were looking for one for a little while. Um, ice up R&D, knowing that that's a way that this game ends. Um, and they go ahead and get the orbital superiority um, in there. Um, it's it's safer there than in HQ for sure. So this is um, a pretty good choice on the part of the, uh, the corp. So my turn 21, uh, okay. So since HQ runs uh, kind of pay, like pay me, they're, they're net positive. I go ahead and run HQ. Um, I get to look at two cards. It's a regular mining license, the Hansei review. I, I'm pretty sure I've seen those cards already. Um, I take the shaver credits and then I run R&D. Uh, there are 13 cards left. Um, it's a four credit server when I use a leech token. So um, I go ahead and kind of push through. Um, And here on access, um, I get the off-world office. So finally, <laughs> I get an agenda after this huge drought uh, in in most of the middle of this game. But it isn't. It doesn't uh, win the game yet. So, um, and then I take a credit here for my last click, and then we're on to um, the corpse uh, twenty-second turn. <laughs> So the ice HQ here, and I think they're trying to make it look like there's something, um, something there, maybe prevent it from being credit positive, um, just you know, produce more defense, and then this becomes advance, advance um, on the uh, orbital superiority. It's my turn twenty-two, so I feel like I have time. So if the corp uh, scores this as a five-three, it's still only five points. Um, so I decide I want to try and keep up with um, which HQ. It's a one cost server. Um, so I can get through, but it's the same cards that I keep seeing. Um, I decide to make a run on R&D. Um, it's a bit of a Hail Mary, but there are only 11 cards in there. And um, let's see, there are uh, how many agendas on the board? uh five on the board right now although i don't know that this is an agenda but but it should be like a three and eleven chance right so um it feels like i you know i i should get a decent odds i would i'm taking these odds basically um i i access a card and it's hansei review <laughs> like i'm mad um i go ahead and gain a credit and take shaver credits knowing that like money is pretty much the the main variable going into this last stage of the game do i have enough to get through r d do i have enough to get through server 12. 
So uh, the Corp is able to advance advanced score here. Um, it applies a tag. Um, and this is kind of an interesting moment because as rich as the Corp was throughout the whole game, um, we're at a, we're at sort of this figure where the Corp now can't advance um, a winning agenda. So uh, the third click um, is taking money off of the regolith and that sort of just barely puts them at the threshold of um, being able to score out. So my turn 23. Um, I remove a tag here. Um, in retrospect, I don't know if that was necessary. Um, the thing that I could lose to, to resources being trashed is verbal plasticity. Um, I don't have any more cards to draw, so it doesn't matter. Um, I guess I'm worried maybe about retribution, which would lose me the game. Um, I'm sort of loosely aware that re retribution isn't in this deck. Um, so yeah, anyway, this is uh, maybe shouldn't have cleared the tags there is kind of the, the uh, lesson is so got to get more accesses so we're just going to run hq again um nothing it, it doesn't uh, gain anything in particular but i'm i'm gaining money from my ability penny shaver leech so we're just trying to keep going here um, and then take credit credit all right so it's the turns 20 uh, the a corpse 24th turn so they draw into a hedge fund and then they uh, first click draw and it send a message. Um, so this wins the game for them. Um, they go ahead and install it in server seven. Um, and this is a bit of a mystery to me, you know, kind of having knowledge about this board state. Um, this is big ice, but you can click through this, right? So so if I run first click on the server, I win, I win the game. And as a matter of fact, like, I maybe only need um, one click to uh, break that last subroutine. The runner cannot steal or trash corp cards for the remainder of this run, but I can let the other two fire. It's the end of the game. Um, uh, I wouldn't, I'd be able to make it. Um, and, you know, we play these games pretty late at night. So uh, in, in our conversation, uh, you know, everybody said this was sort of, sort of intended to do the advanced Yomi thing as supposed to be a misdirect. This is a very obvious um, target for, for the run. So, um, the last thing the corp does is um, play hedge fund and go um, goes up to nine credits. So they're kind of in a better range to be able to res the Ansel. All right, so my turn 24, um, I take the Shaper money and I run server seven on, uh, kind of on a whim, kind of on the feeling like um, uh, I need to check everything. So uh, this is, uh, gotta check it. After the Ansel res, I know that the corp doesn't have enough money to, to sort of score this out. So, what I do here is I accept the final uh, clause. I use clicks to get through or to not have to trash in a, a cart, let the corp trash a card. I use a click to not let the car, the corp install something from HQ and archives. But, you know, when I get through this, I say it doesn't matter if I can't, can't um, uh, steal or trash uh, whatever's at the end of this. So it turns out it's a send the message. I, I learned that I can't I can't steal it, but I basically set myself up for my next turn. And then in the corpse next turn, um, they know that it's kind of lost here. So um, they go ahead and draw and draw. They put another ice over the ansel, but it's tithe. Um, so then I go ahead and I was able to make it through. Um, I save, save up my clicks and then um, I access the last card here. 74 minute game. Um, <laughs> I have 84 accesses, <laughs> which is uh, which is wild, unbelievable. Probably means that I was uh, doing some some inefficient stuff throughout there. So, like the big question now at the end of the game that we're all kind of you know both of us are kind of sitting with is like, does the corp win if send a message goes in the server 12 instead, um, and if they're using anoetic void to keep me out? And I think it's it's largely possible. Um, I guess the real trick is that the the corp doesn't have. Well, the corp had nine credits. Um, if they didn't res the Ansel and, and it was here, uh, it seems like they had enough cards to be able to, to you know, to uh, keep me locked out of the server for the amount of time that it takes for them to sort of advance, advance, advance. Um, and, you know, get, get the agenda out. So I won this game, but it was on the narrowest of margins. Um, and as you can see, uh, you know, it was a 25 turn epic. So, yeah.
that it, that was this game. Um, and again, I, I thought it was really by the end of this, you know, we were both sort of reeling from the experience. And it was again, it was exciting. This is uh, system gateway. These are uh, uh, constructed decks. So we're kind of like pushing at the limits of what gateway can do. Right. Crit hit D20 or uh, Greg Tongue. Um, uh, this is the advanced Yo the advanced Yomi deck is this Jinteki deck and so um, as you can tell it has all the stuff in it to be able to play this game where there are 12 servers and I got to the end of my stack um, so yeah that's this game um, I have uh, mostly been playing um, startup um, I've gotten a chance to play some in-person Netrunner with friends uh, Tater Vader and I played an in-person game uh, earlier this week so um, yeah, man, Netrunner is just really good right now. So um, anyway, I'm happy to sort of share this game with you. Um, hopefully you're still enjoying Gateway. Folks that are moving in a startup, hopefully um, that's happening too. And uh, yeah, um, thanks for hanging out with me. Um, don't forget to turn out the lights and always be running. <laughs> <laughs>